Right, yeah, I'm going to make a ladle. Do, do, okay, right, okay. No, no, no I won't. Um, yeah. Well, it is a presentation. Yeah, go on. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, right, yeah, there, so there aren't really any crooks <laughs> in the pile. Well, there aren't many crooks. So um, I always prefer like a bent branch crook. This is a branch out of the main central trunk. So that should... Basically, I've been lazy and I've got Will on his chainsaw to help me out and cut, cut that bit back. Um, on a... This was quite a big bit of cherry with a small branch. When it's like... When the branch and the log are the similar sort of size, you can get away with splitting it down the down the branch and it will normally split true. If I tried it with this, it wouldn't, I don't think. So, and also I was feeling tired, so I just sod it, you know. Um, would, you, would, you normally, would you normally split at the, at the handle end rather than the, the, uh, the bowl end? Yeah, I mean, as a general rule, I will use, I won't use branch ones, so I kind of get around it with that, <laughs> from that point of view. But, um, but yeah, the... Um, And then if I am doing a branch one, it's normally a bigger branch and therefore you can split down it. So I think that sort of, yeah, that sort of vaguely is the way I kind of go about it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just, so essentially what we've got in here is we've got the grain coming down the middle, but it's coming out kind of at a point about there. So I need to basically get into this so I can split all that bit off so that I've got the grain running through because I, the whole point of making a crook ladle is so you have the grain that runs all the way down to the tip of the bowl so you can use that for strength. So I'm just going to take a little bit off the back here just to get rid of some wood. Um, sorry, you're in the line of fire. Um, and actually as I'm doing that I can see, I don't know if you can see that, there's two knots there which I'm presuming one of them is going to that knot and one of them is coming up. So I've got to work out which one's which, but I, I know that I, I'm going to come back to there at least because you don't leave a knot in the bowl. Well, you can, but they'll often split then. So, um, so this, is the, this is the kind of the less elegant way of um, getting a crook out. I'm going to make a hole in that. <laughs> That's better. Um, people obviously haven't been lifting their axes high enough to. But so the, the reason that's hard there is because that's cross grain. So with a with a, a bent branch crook you've actually got the grain running all the way through, so you can work with the wood all the time. Whereas this, you can hear it different. It's kind of harder work. But I didn't have a much choice. So I'm just taking that to the, to the pith a little bit more. I think Dave just said he sanded his spoons over there. Did you hear that? It's terrible. There are kids around and everything. So now I can, now I've sort of split that. I'm hoping that if I get that axe in there, it won't. How much am I allowed to swear? Okay. I won't bugger it up too much. Yeah, I really hate doing spoons like this. It's alright, once you've got the, the worst of it off. That's why Will in his chainsaw was very useful. It's alright, but... Half the time, it doesn't really feel like it's worth it. 
I'm going to take a bit more off the back because actually it's a bit deep anyway. This is like all knots, it's amazing. Can you see these knots? Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah, I think that would have been good. I think they'd have come up with exactly the same bit as I did, actually, to be honest, because there was nothing else. Right, that's almost there now. You see that knot there? That's actually not a knot. It looks like a knot, but it's actually, that's the, that's the pith of the branch. Because on the first year of that tree, that branch went off and it was all in that first l layer. So as soon as you get to that bit, you're, wow. Well, you're onto the next lot of stuff that can go wrong, I think, probably. <laughs> Yeah, because that knot's going to be exciting. That's really going to be exciting. Right, let's take a bit off the top and see what we're looking at. So I just do relief cuts and then I come in here. So the idea... So you all know about... Or do you all... I should ask it as a question, really. Do you all know about the weakest bits of spoons? and all that sort of jazz. So it's the end. It's right at the tip of that sweep, right at the tips where it's all the scraping goes on, it's where all the, all the wear goes on. That's the thinnest bit um, and that's got no grain. Well, that, so you want the grain to run into that. So that grain is running, running pretty clean there. Pretty clean. Um, so, from the, so what I do now is I kind of, I go right, that's the bottom of the spoon. I'm not gonna take that off and bring it steeper because that's the bottom of the spoon. So I'm gonna bring that down, that top down to meet it. So I can take all of that off, making sure I get it in line with the plane of the actual handle. So that'll do. And I won't take it completely off because it's always nice to have a little bit of leeway to play with. Right. So, another thing I always try and do about this point is like dress the sides square. If, so you see this side's got a curve on it. And I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, oh look, it's that wide. It isn't, it's that wide. And I don't know what's happening with this knot. I should, I should do all the investigation first. So then you don't get nasty surprises later when you've drawn your nice design and you've done all the work and you go, oh, it's all off to one side now. So I dress all the sides first. So, you know, from what was a relatively biggish bit of wood. Um, you're going to get actually not nearly the size of ladle that you might have thought you would. But actually, this is still a pretty big ladle from a from a point of view of actually eating food. Which is ultimately the point of all of this playing with wood in fields is eating food. So I'm just trying to look down that and try and get because of that knot, 
it's almost like it's offset, but I should be able to actually get a handle out the middle, so it should be okay. The words should are being used quite a lot, so. So I'll just take the bark off the top. I don't want to take too much off this top, because depending on how quickly this all goes, I was going to do a hook on the back to show off. Um, I'm only just going to be able to do it anyway, so I might not. I may have to, I have to take more off this top so I can get the width for the handle, which may mean we lose the hook, but it's kind of priorities. Obviously, you've got to get the bowl, and you've got to get the size of the bowl, but then you've also got to get the handle. Handles being important, as we learned earlier. Otherwise, they're bowls. Right. And then I do draw on, but I draw on pretty roughly. Um, I don't ever use templates. I just never got into it. So that's the so lowest point of the bowl is two thirds of the bowl in front of the lowest point, one third behind. And if you use that kind of metric. You're all looking at me blankly and carefully you're nodding. No shaking, no, okay. Okay, so they normally work, the balance of spoons normally works well when you've got, of the, of, in that bowl, you've got a third of that bowl behind the lowest point, two thirds in front. Um, so I'm kind of marking on, right, that is the, that's about the lowest point, so I need to get about a third behind, two thirds in front-ish. Um, so some, often that means you cut the front of the bowl off, you shorten it. But it's better to shorten it now so that everything balances later. Um, so I'll do the shape that I always end up doing. Don't experiment on a demo. And I've been doing really long necks recently and then putting a bulb right on the top end, which is quite fun. So I'll try that again with this one. Could even put a ball on the end, but that's being optimistic. Right. the interesting bit where around this knot so it's kind of the I think there's going to be knot in the bowl at this rate and I, I think if I take it all out we lose the spoon so for demo purposes now at this point I'm actually so I'm cutting in where a lot of people will cut a saw cut in but it's slow and boring so I don't do it and actually I also find it quite difficult because I always over cut when I've done it. So I actually I do this and I can find it. Um, I mean I'm confident with the axe so I'm not, it's not really a problem but um, it also means that so if that's d down the bowl is not this bit here there's like a kind of triangle there that that's not going to be in the spoon anyway because you're going to have this keel underneath the bowl. So you can actually get loads of that off with the axe as well at the same point. You can undercut the bowl here. And with ladles, the whole aim of the game is to do, well, aim of the game on all spoons is to do as much as you can with the axe, but it's even more with a ladle. Avoid cutting through onto your bowl by tilting it back. Do you do that? So if I miss, it goes straight through, it misses. So as it, gets, as it gets more dangerous, I'm pulling it back. Um,
The other one you can do is put it on the side of the block like that, so that then the, the block is your stop on the axe, which is quite useful. So especially on this side, I use it quite a bit. I don't seem to use it on the other side so much, I don't know why. But that's sort of like a, it can be a sort of a stop cut. Um, I think the last one I demoed, I went straight into the bowl and nobody noticed until right at the end when it split in half. So it's quite good. <laughs> I managed to get away with it. But like by split in half, I mean like literally into two pieces <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> Right, I just noticed there's a tiny bit of, I haven't quite taken out all the pith on the back. It's almost done, it's just a tiny bit off. So that was a mistake. So I always, if you do notice that, take it out immediately because it's going to throw your, um, your planning off later. Oh, I'm going to do the side of that. This bit, you don't, you, it's almost like you want to lever this off because that's so fragile. Sometimes almost so we're getting there. So I'll probably just the grain is a bit all over the place in this bowl. So I heard then, I heard it go crack. I think it's all right but it's, that just told me that it was splitting instead of cutting when I, I wanted it to cut across there. I didn't want it to split. Um, so this side will be even worse. I'm being really pessimistic actually, aren't I? So when I'm, when I'm worried about it, can you see almost I'm I'm flicking more and more and more and more. Which, so basically I'm slicing as much as possible. So I'm really, really pushing the slicing cuts. Um, because I don't want to, I'm giving as little kind of percussive power as I can and giving as much slice as I can at the same time. Yeah, I mean, God knows if this is going to work. I think I think this knot will actually split out on this. I'll keep going, it doesn't matter, but I th I'm fairly certain that's going to split out. And I don't think... If I take it out... Try it, I could try a little, little bit out. You see, that's just wanting to split. I mean, if I can get to the middle of that knot, I mean, every cut I'm doing at the moment is making the ladle smaller, as in it's making its volume smaller, because I'm undercutting that bowl, which is really what you don't want to do. But I think it's that or not a spoon, so. see what happens. It's now incredibly wonky underneath and I like to try and keep that as square as possible but that's sort of what I've had to do I think. Um, so 
So I probably will just square it up a bit just to help my eye. Yeah, look, that's whole thing. Should be entitled How to Carve a Really Gnarly Bit of Cherry with a Massive Knot in It. Okay, it's now a smaller ladle. Anyway, I'm not going to fiddle with it anymore because it's just going to come off, I think. So, Okay, so next thing I do is I take the front off a bit. What's the time? How long have I used? It's quarter to five. So I've had half the time. Thanks, Tom. Right, so I'm going to hollow out the bowl next. Um, for which I, well, I'm going to rough hollow out the bowl, which I use adzes for. Um, Mary told me not to say anything about the adzes. <laughs> but I'm going to say, Mary made the ads. We are building a forge in the spring. They will be on Instagram. We promise we're not having any more children. Um, uh, yeah, so, so I'm using that one basically, um, which we designed to get well. I, yeah, we designed together. Mary did all the technical actual making the bloody thing. Um, so I normally start um, with the handle away from me, um, which is sort of. I sometimes find if you go that way, you can sometimes pop something off the front. I don't know. I, it, it, I have done it both ways in the past. and um, But this is quite tough cherry and I wouldn't want to... I really wouldn't want to hollow this out too much by hand. Um, I think this knot's going to come into play again in a minute, so... We'll see what happens. But it's kind of, um, it doesn't take off a huge amount, but it's so accurate. Um, I do love it. For those of you who don't know, Mary's my wife. So I try and have, in the bowl, I, I normally try and have that back um, wall quite steep. Because if you actually think about when you, you go into stew or whatever and you lift it up, you're sort of lifting it, you're not actually holding it. You lift it kind of like, sort of like that. So the, the, the tip sort of comes out the, out of the liquid, if you say, so the, the, the flat is there. So if you, if you want to increase the volume of the ladle or serving spoon, you want to have that all at the back. And the front is thin and narrow because the grain's running through it. And you want it nice and thin and narrow so it just goes through liquid to scoop it up. So 
it's not like if you imagine like a cup on the end of a stick where you kind of got to it's it's not that's very unusual to find a bit of wood that will do that and it's also actually you need a huge pan for a to actually use that it's it's almost impossible um, and once you've got this hollow in there you then expand it so it's almost like with an ad you make a small hollow and then you make a bigger one and you just cut away at all the at all the walls all around it Normally I'd go a bit thinner than that, but I'm not going to now because of the knot. I'm going to just leave it as it is and I'll do a bit more cautious exploration with the knife later. Um, right. Uh, so now I'll take the handle down a bit because the handle's still huge. Um, once again, you really want to aim for pretty close to, well you want to get as close as you can to final dimensions really. Um, you've got to be a bit careful because its shape changes as you, as you carve and um, yeah. So like even just taking off this, that, that kind of back, just, just narrowing down the, the handle a little bit at the back there, that's a, you know, that's two or three major knife cuts, which my hands now no longer, I don't have to knacker my hands out by doing. Knackered enough as it is. Um, and then I'm just gonna take the, I find that for me, if the top of a bowl is flat, it looks a bit weird. Sometimes it works if it's supposed to be flat and you can see it's supposed to be flat, but mine always want a bit of a sweep. Well, I like a bit of a sweep in that top, that, uh, that top line and that sort of mirrors that bottom line, um, which can be a bit delicate, but. And also, you know, Having said about, you know, you want to take it as far as you can with the axe. Don't be stupid either. So it's like, um, so this isn't deep enough to make a hook. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna curve. I'm gonna curve. I'm gonna put like a curve in it instead, just for fun. To be a bit careful with this cut because I'm putting a lot of that force from the axis going through the tip which I can feel it kind of flexing but all right right so that's about far enough I always start on that bit there's no reason to but that's just where I always start but I sort of try and get that curve this curve from the from the bowl that comes round and then S curves back in. And I just try and get that one smooth and then I always try and then I try and match it on the other side. this knot is again and don't be afraid to go back to the axe yeah. 
So it's really tough. It's going, the grain's all over the place on this bit. So I'm kind of... Yeah, I can actually just almost sort of chop through it with the axe, whereas with the knife I'd be... I can't make the axe do that negative curve, as it were. So I have to... But yeah, that's got rid of the worst of that bit. That's the lesser spotted can opener grip. Anyone use that one? It's in the books. So I tried to learn it. And it is actually a very occasionally useful. You kind of push up. So it's a kind of, but for that kind of, for just there, it's... I don't use it very often, but for that bit, I do occasionally. So I'm just trying to make sure that that, the, the centre of the handle is roughly in the middle of the bowl just broadly speaking, because I don't want to overdo it one side or the other and throw it out a bit. The curve on that side is much nicer, I need to make that curve push it up a bit, but it's, um, it's roughly central, which is the important bit now. So I can't go much further on that other side. I can go a little bit on this side, and then that's about right. Yeah. You've all gone quiet again. Have you fallen asleep? No answer, so the answer must be yeah. Oh, mesmerized. Oh, that's all right then. Don't mind mesmerized, that's all right. I, I actually play around with it depending on the amount of crook. So on a steeper crook, I wouldn't, weirdly. Um, and on a, on a gentler crook, I do, but that's for the look of the thing as opposed to the use, I think. It seems to just kind of give it a bit of a kick. Um, and that's if the wood, the handle wood is straight. It's not always, so like that one was from a bent bit and it bent back down. There's no way I could turn that the other way round. So it's sort of, yeah. Um. But yeah, I've played around with it. It's recently I've started doing these sort of I might put a lump on the end, yeah. Well, I have it quite thin. So the thinness here, it can be very thin that way as long as it's deep enough that way. Um, so I'll go thinner than that, that'll go thinner. That's not, that's not finished. Um, Quite tough cherry, actually. What 
What's that noise? Mm, too deep. So I'm still just refining shape. I'm still changing. I'm not doing anything. I'm not, you notice that all the, um, all the surfaces are square to each other. I still haven't taken any, I've taken no diagonals off except for that bit that I did because of the knot. So it's all still, broadly speaking, it's all square. Um, and I find that keeping it square for as long as possible, really, really, really helps. Um, I've got a cup of tea there. Yeah, that one. It's not finished. And it went really weird when it dried, that one. It, it bent all over the place. It's, um, It's some fancy wood. It's called like something like the the silk tassel tree from a, one of the guys at the Spoon Club. Um, his mother-in-law had a tree that he cut a branch off, and it's it was amazing wood. It carved really nicely, and um, and it had this ama that amazing colour in. But then when it dried, it warped all over the place, like. The, um, the handle at the top was straight, the way it's gone off. Yeah, it, it, where it's, yeah. And, I've, and I've flattened it and I've, and, I've worked, and I've worked it to try and get, get it back. Now something when you do go with the grain all the way through the tip, you can actually, you, you can actually cut out through the end. So if you've got a flat piece of wood and you've put a crank in, which I'm sure you've all done, this point you'd be coming that way wouldn't you because you'd be going oh no I've got my crank well this no it doesn't matter because you remember when I had that that bottom bit and I took that top off at the right early on so so the, the this this sweep you can actually do relatively easily which is quite handy um, Right, now this is the tricky side. So having said that about the grain on the other side, this side, there are no rules. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's put a knife in and find out what's happening with the grain. So when you are worried about that, just take it easy. Just go in slow and... Yeah, it's a bit weird. I think I'm going to have to come down that way. So the side of this ladle is going to include a knot, which is not... I, do, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm pulling the knife through again, like I was doing with the axe. I'm really trying to slice as much as possible through this, through this bit, because what I don't want it to do is get caught and then go clunk in, and then I've got a split that's right deep in. It's, um, yeah, it's quite d weird. Sorry, I'm sure this is fascinating view viewing. Um, man trying to get purchase on very small piece of knot. So I've got this kind of tip for scraping. I quite like that to be the highest point on the bowl. It just looks nice. So I'll take a bit off. Thanks.
And then as I've taken that down, I've got to take this side down a bit because it's that whole thing about I was saying about the sweep of the top. I always want that the lowest point on the top is quite nice if it matches up with the lowest point on the bottom. That means I've got 15 minutes to finish this spoon, doesn't it, if Dave's finished. It's a challenge, isn't it? Mm. Right. I think we're just going to sort of pretend that that's finished for now. So what I'd do now is I'd come back to the top and start looking again at the handle. So it's kind of a looks a bit wonky at the moment. Um, which is annoying. So I'll try and balance it. Wonky is fine. I don't mind wonky at all, but I want... I don't like straight lines, and the way that was being wonky, it was almost giving me a straight line, which... So I, I, I'll come in here. looking quite weird now but it's almost that it's like there's a bump in it That's a bit better. There's a bit of a lump still, but... As we're kind of getting near to the end of the hour, any questions? I don't... If I was... So I haven't got the depth. Because... Um, so, yeah, so this line at the back of the spoon, so that runs from the right all the way down, which basically... I, you have that line and then you add the hook on the outside of that line. So there, that line that comes up through there carries on and the hook's kind of beyond it. So, so you do, so basically the way I would do it is I'd have left that a lot thicker and I'd have cut in with the axe and cut in above it with the axe and then just hollowed it out with the, with the knife. So there's no, there's no, it's just carve it out basically. But the thing to remember is that if you, if you try and make the, the that, that curve match that curve and then have a big, that looks really weird. So it's, it's, it's an extra added on to the spoon as opposed to, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I basically, I cut, cut in with the axe, like a V cut, standard V cut. And then I, um, yeah, I just sort of take that back. I, I just sort of hollow it out with the, with the knife. The grain's a bit weird when you do it. I wouldn't be able to explain it without actually doing it, but it's, um, it's a bit, the, the, the grain's the wrong way normally. It doesn't feel right when you're doing it. So you've got to actually think about 
as you're cutting it, you've got to work out, actually, hang on, where is the grain on this bit? And I've got to cut downhill to avoid it chattering. Um, so you've got to just sort of think about that. So just going back to being square and everything, who's on after me? Max, boldness. Oh, well, he'll chuck me off then if he's being bold. Um, oh, okay, cool. Um, what is the time? Ten, ten, seven minutes past. Okay, cool. I've got 13 minutes then. Oh, I'll, get, I'll get quite close. I'll get the handle done anyway. This might not have a ball on the end of it, but... Um, eh? The features are dropping off majorly, yeah, yeah. It's going to have a hook, it's going to have a bowl. Yeah, the bowl's going to fall off in a minute. It's going to be left with a nice handle. Yeah, Spurkle, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you sure? I need the caffeine to kick in before I'm able to actually... Be bold, bold enough. Okay, cool. Well, you, you give me a five minute warning then. What are they singing? Eh? Why are we waiting? Why are we waiting? Yeah. <laughs> it's something about carving. Inky pinky parley vu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can you see how those two curves are different? You all leant forward in unison then, that was great. <laughs> it's annoying because I like that curve. I don't like that curve as much. Unfortunately, I've got to take more off. So that, that curve's going to have to go and it's going to have to match that curve, which is a pain, but. As my dad always used to say, you can take a bit more off. You can't stick a bit more back on. That's a bit better. One thing to think about when I'm just doing this is, so I now am starting to take angles I'm, I'm starting to move away from that constant square, square, square thing. Partly from a looking point of view on the top. If it's square, it's often not perfectly square, so it actually starts being a little bit out and that throws your eye out. So I always try and just bring the keel in a bit so it just helps with looking at what's going on. Not much. It, it, I mean, you might, might take a bit more off later on, but just a bit just to help the vision. Right, I'm just going to finish the handle and then I'll stop. If that's all right with you, Mac. So I'm just... So what I'm doing with this facet is I want it, I want it to start right at 45 there and I want it to spin because I don't want it to be quite 45 at the end. So I'm sort of, but I also want it to be one facet. And then the grain's playing up again.
But yeah, I quite I quite enjoy facets that spin around a bit. Yeah, that's worked out quite nicely. And then, in an ideal world, this keel just melds straight into that facet. And then, this this cut just melds into the keel that melds into the facets. Ideally, there's no kind of like, uh, uh. It all just it all just comes together. Um, so then at the top here, I'm going to do. I'm actually going to I'm going to do was it one two three four five. I'm going to do five facets on the top. So I'm going to do one quite. One quite angled, and then three very shallow. And they probably won't all last all the way down the, the spoon because they're going to get lost. They go too deep. They can't. There's no room for them right down on the neck. Um. I don't know. There's almost not room from up the top, but it can just give a really nice. Um, I might take this one a bit deeper. It, it gives it a really nice, like um, slightly textured feel. If you if you've got the room, which is quite fun. I'll just make these ones a little bit deeper. And then I then I've got the I almost said headroom then like a Tory party um, leadership hopeful. You've got the wood to carve the depth. You'll vote for me. Excellent, great. What to lead the Tory party? No thanks. <laughs> Is the Tory party leader allowed to fire them all? <laughs> I wouldn't get much carving done though, would I? I don't get much carving done anyway. <laughs> yeah, that sort of worked. So now I've got two facets that sort of come in there and then they just mould. You, none of you can see that from where you are, but it looks lovely from where I'm sitting, so it's fine. Um, we scrapped the ball on the top, didn't we? So I'll just... Right. I should probably give up to Max now. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah, have a look. Pass it around. Cool.